whether you have a high-end cooler like this roto molded canyon cooler here or a budget cooler like this igloo cooler you're probably not getting near the ice life you should i've opened a lot of people's coolers over the years on adventures and so many of the same mistakes are taking place in everyone's cooler and i've been making these mistakes as well but once i learned these methods i saw the light so today I'll be showing you nine things you're probably doing wrong when it comes to dealing with your camp cooler and some great solutions for how to make your cooler last at least a day longer, probably days longer in the field. Eliminating annoying ice runs, soggy food, and unorganized coolers. First thing I want to talk about is a rookie mistake that I see done often and that is not pre-cooling your cooler before you go out on your adventure. When you skip pre-cooling, it's essentially like sending this cooler out into battle against the sun, but it wasn't prepared. So all you need to do the night before is take what we call sacrificial ice, ice you're willing to not use again, some water, throw it in the cooler, get that cooler to take on those cold temps. So the next morning when you throw your fresh ice in, it's not melting trying to get that temp down. A big mistake that a lot of you are doing, even before you pack your cooler, is buying a cooler that is too small for your needs. Now something to keep in mind, a larger cooler has better ice retention, and that's because you have a larger insulation to surface ratio. But a lot of times these coolers are expensive, so I find people either going out and buying a cooler smaller than they need due to price, but I think more often what I'm seeing is either people don't understand the magical two to one ratio, or they're not following it correctly. Imagine your cooler like a seesaw and it has to find its balance point. And when it dips out of balance, you're getting towards that hot point. When you do not follow the two to one ratio, which is two parts ice to one part food and drink. And when you do not follow this guideline, which many of you don't, as you'll see here in a bit when I show you an actual example, you're sacrificing your insulation, which ultimately sacrifices your ice. So here's what an actual two to one ratio looks like if you follow it to the T. And that's really what it is. Do you actually follow it like this? Or are you like me today and surprised that, yeah, you've probably been breaking the rules a little bit. I like that, rules. Well, this is just one thing you can mess up, but I have probably five or six other things and all in combination, it's going to probably knock down the efficiency of your cooler by half if you continue to do things wrong. And this next one is probably one of the biggest debated topics in the outdoor cooler world, and that is to drain or not to drain? That is the question. One major mistake is draining your meltwater unnecessarily. Imagine this cooler as a camel trekking across the desert carrying those water reserves. He eliminates that water. He's essentially defenseless out there. Water, if you didn't know, has a higher thermal density than air, which means that it's going to lose that cold longer. It'll hold it longer. You remove that water every time you open this lid. You are taking all this open space and filling it with new hot air that the ice is going to have to work to bring down the temperature. Which leads me to the next topic, the next mistake, and that is taking this big, beautiful, insulated cooler and opening it and shutting it and opening it and shutting it. We all know the more we open our cooler, the more we allow hot air into it. But what can we do about this? Even if you pack your cooler like a seasoned fishing guide in Alaska, if you open and shut that all day long like most of us do, all that hard work is going to go out the window. Where do I? No! <laughs> but I have a solution for this, and it's not just minimizing how often you open and close your cooler. It's a two cooler system. Many people forget the cardinal rule, which is separate your food and drinks. Imagine your cooler like a magician's hat. The more magic tricks you pull out of it, 
the less magic the hat becomes. Unfortunately, we learned that as an adult. As a kid, it always seems to hold magic. Same thing goes with your cooler. If you keep reaching in and out of it, you are going to let in all that hot air. Separating all your drinks into, you know, your budget cooler, the cooler you find at the yard sale next door. Drinks don't need to have as good of insulation because they do not spoil. And the other beauty of having two coolers is that you can consolidate. You guys hear that back there? They are always coming up on me every time I film. When you have one giant cooler like this, and it's not even that big, this cooler halfway through your trip is going to have a lot of open air space. Well, what you do is you take this cooler now that has been depleted and you move that ice and you move those items, those drinks into this. Now you've consolidated, filled in that air gap and you're going to have longer, better ice retention for the rest of your trip. I am getting out of here to find a better filming location because this thing is coming in hot. All right, I think we are out of the rain. I can still feel the humidity from it. But the next one before getting to the big ones, this is just a little one, but I see a lot of people doing it. And that's not prepping your food before putting it in the cooler. Don't run out last second. That night before, take off the excess packaging that'll get waterlogged, that takes up space. And then my biggest tip is taking things and putting them in resealable containers or bag. The next one is so simple, but I don't know if I've ever went in someone's cooler and saw this done thoughtfully. And that is don't neglect the power of frozen food. Think of frozen food as your ice blocks. Frozen food actually counts in your two to one ice to food ratio, meaning the frozen food is the ice. So if there's any food that doesn't need to be consumed day one, beforehand freeze that. And not as a square or a sphere, try to make it all in one nice plane so this flat frozen food can stack nicely in your fridge, not only saving you space, but giving you additional insulating and cooling power. After all that frozen food, I want you to look at your cooler like a well-organized kingdom with a very strict rule. And that is nothing enters this kingdom that isn't refrigerated. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Wow. That means don't pick up things last second and throw it in room temperature. The night before, bring everything down to a refrigerated temp. That way when you throw it in this pre-cooled fridge, no ice has to work to cool down any of your items. Don't make that ice work more than it has to. And I talked about frozen food being your block ice, but also don't forget regular block ice. This can easily be made in the bottom of a bread pan or whatever container you have, or you can buy it at your local grocery store. But what block ice does, it has less surface area than cubed ice, so less air is getting around it. Block ice lasts longer than cube ice, and it's just another necessary layer to your system. See this commercial freezer here that you see the boys digging in? Commercial freezers typically freeze at or just below the freezing point. So make sure you buy your ice the day before, take it home and give it a deep freeze in your freezer before throwing it in your cooler. But that's only part of the ice equation. Consider your cooler as a masterful blend of ice. Now the block ice with the surface area is great, but you still need that cubed ice to wrap around your drinks, your food, filling in those air gaps. So do you just leave all that cubed ice roaming freely? You can. Uh, a lot of people will take that and put it into sealed containers throughout their cooler so that their food doesn't get water damaged or so they can have fresh ice for drinks later. For me, I drop about three quarters of my ice in here, let it roam free, and then the rest I put in containers so I do have clean ice in the field. Because I keep mentioning that warm air is the enemy of your cooler, and I don't expect you to not open your cooler up during the day, that's just, who wants to be afraid of their cooler? Reusable ice packs placed on the top of your food load and your drink load and your ice load is going to put a barrier holding that cold air and keeping that hot air out. So you can use flexible ice packs to kind of bend over. Uh, you can use multiple ones. You can just take out sections and leave some in there to kind of hold that temperature in. Here's a tip I've seen from Alaska. River guides will take 
wet towels. Instead of putting that plastic reusable ice on top, they'll throw a wet towel on it. And that actually not only protects from air moving through, what you're doing is you're getting the uh, properties of evaporation and you're getting evaporative cooling taking place. What goes below the ice packs is actually the most important, and that's packing a cooler. That's another mistake a lot of people make. Packing a cooler is like a house of cards. If one layer of it is wrong, the whole thing comes tumbling down. Essentially, this is just a really quick summary of what you just learned. At the bottom, you're going to have your block of ice and your frozen food. Then because it counts as ice, you can layer cold food next, refrigerated food. Then from there, a layer of ice. And I mean a layer of ice as thick as your layer of food. And I think that's where a lot of us fail. Even in this video example, because I ran out of ice, my ice was not even thick enough. Then a layer of food, then a layer of ice, then a layer of food, then a layer of ice, and then those ice packs as the cherry on top. Just notice how little food I was able to fit in that giant 45 quart cooler, and I did not have enough ice. It really goes to show you most people are putting way too much food for the size of their coolers. And then there's all the issues with transport. How many of you have seen somebody take a cooler freshly packed and put it right in a hot car trunk or on a carrier on the back of the vehicle or up on the roof or in the bed of the truck? If you can make space for it, put it inside that controlled temperatured vehicle. Then you get out to camp, you're going to need to put it under a tree, under a picnic table. How many times have you seen a cooler right on the seat of a picnic table or up on top of a picnic table or just sitting out in the open? Some people even put Reflectix on the top of the lid or insulate the entire cooler. Sun and heat is your enemy. And even the color of your cooler matters. When picking a color, if you pick a darker color, just like a teardrop trailer, you don't see teardrops with the tops of the roofs a dark color. Well, I hope you don't because you don't want any color absorbing the heat of that sun. A nice light cooler is also going to aid you in keeping everything the way it should be. If you enjoyed this style of tips and tricks video, I'll put a few videos and playlists up here of other tips and tricks we do, like staying clean out in nature, uh, how to set up camp, all those fun goodies. I'll put links in the description below. But as usual, stay safe out there on the road and we'll see you in the next episode.